One of a dog's greatest joys in life is to run off leash and be free in the great outdoors. For many dogs, this was impossible to do safely unless you use an electronic collar which used a shock. Many people didn't want to use this style of collar because they didn't want to cause their dog discomfort or pain. Well, great news friends, we now have a way of accomplishing this without causing discomfort or pain with the vibrate function. It's simply magical. <laughs> You sit on a throne of lies. People have been sold some really bad marketing when it comes to the vibrate function on e-collars. This bad marketing could get your dog in a lot of trouble or simply get him killed. People often run out to Amazon, buy the very cheapest e-collar they can find, they slap it on their dog, they hit the vibrate button and back their dog comes to them. And they think this is great. But this is really just a fool's glory. As they say, People are sometimes penny wise and pound foolish. When it comes to the vibrate function on the e-collar, there's basically three categories of dogs. With the first category of dog, they might feel it, they might not, but they simply don't care. And they're not really giving you any clues that they're even feeling it. With the second category of dog, you can see initially that they probably feel it. You might get a little bit of a reaction out of them, but no nothing too severe. And a very short time later, they become like the first category. It appears that they can't feel it. Now, the third category is the one where people think that they're having success. Again, it's a fool's glory in that people don't really understand what's happening. Okay, so the e-collar's on the dog. They hit that vibrate. The dog comes running back to them. They think this is great. And I would ask, why is the dog doing this? Dogs only do things roughly for two reasons. They want to get something nice. They want to avoid something bad. Your dog is running back to you because he doesn't understand what's going on and he's terrified in many cases, uh, especially if you have a weak nerve dog. Often a big part of the problem with the do-it-yourselfer is their horrible timing. You know, some of them don't even understand what timing is about. Whether you're delivering a reward to a dog or you're delivering an aversive, there should be some indication of such within two seconds. When we do positive reinforcement training, typically we can't deliver the reward within two seconds, so we use something called a marker. Now, when you're delivering the aversive, typically there won't be a marker. You want to deliver the aversive within two seconds of the command. This sounds easy enough, right? Well, you wouldn't be surprised how many people will mess it up. You have to consider that people, when they start doing pause and reinforcement, you'll see a lot of people that will deliver the food and five seconds later say yes as a marker. Now, if they're getting it wrong with pause and reinforcement, there's not going to be any fallout. The dog might stand when they're supposed to sit or something like that during the training process. However, when you make mistakes with an aversive tool, you could literally cause the dog to have a phobia. The next thing to consider is that most of these colors only have one level of vibrate. That means one level of aversiveness. If the dog is running back to you in a hurried manner, it means that the dog finds the collar highly aversive. So this might be the equivalent of taking the shock or if you prefer stimulation setting and dialing it to 15 out, 50 out of 100 and whacking him. Now, you might argue, how can that be? You know, this is just vibration. It's the same as a cell phone. Well, perspective is everything. Imagine telling somebody that has PTSD that starts freaking out when there's fireworks overhead that, come on, get over it. It's all in your head. There's nothing to this. You wouldn't do that, would you? Hopefully not. Mm -hmm. One of the problems with the Amazon e-collar buyer is that when they do put it on their dog and they do get some stress in their dog, they often don't recognize it as being stress. Here's a listing of signs of stress. You can simply pause the video and read through the list if you're uh, unfamiliar with this topic. Of course, my belief is that minor amounts of stress are very healthy for an organism. However, Dump truck loads of stress are highly destructive, so they are to be avoided at all costs. 
Okay, so if you're interested in learning a little bit more about reading stress in a dog or understanding dog behavior in general, what I suggest you do is go on YouTube and find a whole bunch of training videos where the approach is very militant. And when you watch these videos, look for signs of stress and start to write them down. After a while, you're going to be get really good at this and, uh, you know, you're going to recognize it more easily. Yeah, it wasn't mentioned in the list earlier, but uh, growling and biting are also signs of stress. Just saying. Say you discover that the vibrate function works extremely well, and now you're using it all the time. Every time your dog doesn't want to come in the house, you're hitting that button, he comes scurrying into the house fast as he can, and you think you know, this is the best thing ever. So you continue to do this. Now, over time, you notice your dog isn't running quite as fast. You've only ever used it in the yard, but you begin to believe that this is going to work anywhere because this somehow has trained your dog. And one day your dog decides to go after a squirrel, a cat, or a deer or potentially run up to another dog, or maybe even up to people that don't like dogs. You are big, Jackie. And now you're hitting that vibrate button desperately, and it's not stopping your dog. It's not stopping your dog because all the adrenaline and everything else is overriding any amount of discomfort or phobia that that dog might have. You know, he simply doesn't feel it. And there could be dire consequences. Your dog could end up running into traffic. Your dog might run up to another dog and inadvertently start a fight. The people get involved. They end up getting bitten. And guess what? Now you're getting sued. And this will be 100% your fault because your dog was off leash. I've been a critic of the vibrate function for most of this video. I want to recognize though that there are two legitimate uses for the vibrate function. Some people train their dog that when they feel the vibration there, the dog is to turn around and come back or the dog will feel a stimulation. The big problem with this, of course, though, is that there are dogs that will continuously gamble and push the envelope because they know they'll always get a warning first before ever feeling the stimulation. The other big thing to take note of, this is not for the novice or beginner e-collar user to attempt because it requires a much higher level of skill. And if you get this wrong, again, you can instill phobias into your dog which take a lot of work to remove. Another use of the vibrate function is as a silent recall. Your dog's barking outside at night, you hit that vibrate button, he comes running back to you very quickly with the expectation that he will receive a food reward. Again, this is also useful if your dog's four or 500 feet away from you that you don't have to yell, you can simply hit the vibrate button and he knows that there is a reward when he returns to you. Now, be advised, all of this could be accomplished with, ten, with a $10 whistle. Are you telling me that you need to spend $200 on a whistle? What would you do with a brain if you had one? Damn! You don't have to spend a ton of money to learn how to do the haptic system. If I get enough interest in the comments section, I will be more than happy to do a video showing how to do this with, again, dogs that don't find the vibration to be aversive. That is key. It's simply classical conditioning has been around a long time. There aren't any big secrets around it. So by now you're probably wondering why I have a problem with companies selling the air quotes haptic system. Well, the problem lies in that they're not giving you the fine print up front. So they demonstrate the system that appears to work wonderfully, but they don't tell you till later on that it's only going to work as well as your dog desires a reward. For instance, if your dog's chasing a rabbit and he's having a really good time chasing that rabbit and you hit that pager button and he says, chasing this rabbit's a lot more fun than your dried up cheese, it's probably going to fail. Now, these companies will then go on to tell you, oh, but that's when you need the stimulation to really communicate to your dog that he should come back. 
So if the aversives are gonna be absolutely necessary and the vibrate function isn't gonna do it on its own, that should be the priority. Let's remember that we get these e-collars to give our dogs better lives where they get more freedom, but the key point being that we can keep them safe. And if we have to cause them some discomfort to keep them safe in an emergency, so be it. I certainly would have a life-saving operation even if it was gonna be painful. To sell somebody a system where they might have a belief that it's actually keeping their dog safe when it is in fact not, to me, is simply unethical.